So our project's called Tiger Trade. My name is Tim Van Horn. I'm an IT major. I'm Kyle Carlson, a BSIT major. I'm Tim Gilman, a uh, computer science major. I'm Jason McGlynn, computer science major. So Tiger Trade's a classified advertisement website. Uh, it's strictly uh, restricted to uh, students and staff of Mizzou. Uh, to get onto this uh, website, you do have to be certified. You do have to have a Mizzou uh, provide email account. Uh, once you are provided, you can log in. Once you log in, you're able to uh, you're able to uh, view and post any advertisements for services and items. Uh, we do not offer payment through our website. We're strictly leave that up to uh, the buyers and sellers. And then uh, we, uh, we kind of want Tiger Trade to be more of a networking tool for buyers and sellers to be able to communicate and connect. We have a couple goals in mind with Tiger Trade. One of our goals is to make sure that students are more comfortable when they're buying and selling online. Uh, one thing that kind of discourages users when they're using the online websites like this is that they're kind of scared of who they're talking to on the other side. So we hope Tiger Trade kind of gives them the, the comfort knowing that they're talking to another Mizzou student or staff. Another goal of our uh, Tiger Trade systems that we hope that we present a way to students that they can make some money back on their uh, student expenses. Uh, a lot of times students you know, have to spend money on things other than tuition like books and uh, tickets for sporting games, furniture. So we hope that Tiger Trade can be a valuable resource to them so they can make some money back on their student expenses. Okay, so uh, why we chose to do this uh, website and why we try to try your trade. Um, the first thing is we all kind of got together because we all wanted to do a web application. Um, so that was kind of the main thing that brought us together. And then from there, we decided on that we'd like to do something that actually uh, would be usable by the community and help, be able to help students. So um, one problem that we all thought we faced as students and that students usually face is there isn't necessarily a way to get everything you need in the same place um, for um, ads, buying, selling stuff, just in general. So um, if you wanted to buy or sell stuff, you'd have to go to Craigslist. If you wanted to get student tickets, there's a Facebook page for that, but you'd have to go to that. Um, tutoring, you'd have to go either to the success centers or places like that. Um, and so just having it all in one place. Uh, so you don't have to go to all those different places, as well as uh, we all thought it was a really interesting and cool idea uh, to actually be able to do this. So this is kind of the overall design of our, of our project. We plan on making a web application, plan on use PHP, uh, JavaScript, jQuery uh, to make the application. We also want a responsive design for the application. Then we're going to use Postgres as a database management system, Codeniner as a framework, and then we're also going to use a Scrum development as a development framework for the project. This is a use case diagram for Tiger Trade. Our two main actors are the student and administrators. Uh, the main functions of a student will be able to make ads, edit those ads. They can also delete those ads. Then they can also view other ads. On top of that, they're also uh, able to flag any uh, other ads that may be inappropriate for the website. So then uh, administrators have the functions to manage those flags and also block those users if it's too inappropriate. Uh, and then administrators also have the ability to manage ads of other users, which includes editing or deleting other ads. Uh, we, use, we chose to use a Postgres SQL database for our, our project. Um, some, or some advantages of this are it's free and it's online, open source, so the database will be openly, it's always being updated frequently by many users. Um, has a large online support group, so you can go to any frequently asked questions site and uh, get help from experienced users of the sort. Um, you can create very detailed databases that tie many different relationships together, and this will be crucial for our project. Um, some disadvantages are if there is a lot of read-heavy operations needed to be performed, this can be a little slow on the system, um, but uh, even though it's still used by a lot of programmers worldwide, um, some web hosting uh, applications do not allow for Postgres, but this will not actually be our problem because we found one that works out. Um, for some simpler database systems, this can be considered overkill because it is a little too much. Just for that. And then uh, some re more reasons why we chose Postgres. Um, 
our data integrity is very important to us because we don't we don't want to mess up any of the user created ads or anything like that. Um, it sticks to the SQL standard, which means that um, if we do need to bring in any third party applications, we can use those at easily integrated. Um, and also it allows for, like I mentioned before, very complex database designs, which means, as you can see in the next slide, um, it's pretty complex. I'll kind of try to walk through it kind of slow so we can really see I read all the relationships. On the user table, they're going to have two different roles. Um, you'd either be a student or an administrator, as previously stated. The student can create an ad and under certain different categories. Categories will include um, roommate, uh, lease finder, ride sharing, buying, selling, free, um, study groups, tutoring, etc., or as any other ones that we see fit. Uh, some subcategories will have actually help the user to uh, look forward or look at the ads underneath those. Those might be like a tutoring for a certain class. Um, the user can upload up to five images per ad, no more. Um, they can also create tags, and these tags will be allowed to do like a keyword search later. And they can also comment on these, and if these comments exceed five flags on them, then it goes to the administrator, and the administrator can update or modify or delete or do whatever action deemed necessary. Okay, so um, the reason why we chose PHP um, in Code Native Framework, uh, one reason is because of the uh, multiple hosting websites, since the uh, uh, supply is so much, um, they have so many of them, um, it's very cheap, uh, which means uh, good for us since we're college students. Um, there's also a lot of documentation since PHP isn't um, one of the newest languages. Uh, there's a lot of do documentation and knowledge, so any problem that may arise from errors we get, we'd be able to solve um, because uh, most, probably 99% of the time, the stuff we or the stuff for errors we have, other people have already had and posted online how to fix them. Um, also, just the familiarity aspect that all of us have worked with PHP before and all done it um, in class, so we've all kind of had the same standards of how to write in PHP uh, is a big bonus. And then as well as the um, PostgreSQL database works very well with the PHP and Code Igniter to help the project um, go along smoothly. So there's a lot of criteria to consider when you're choosing a framework. Uh, documentation is a huge factor. Uh, having a large amount of documentation can really help out developing an app. When you're faced with problems and you need help, that documentation is great to go to and find that out. Another great, uh, another thing to consider is the learning curve. When you have good documentation, that learning curve is lowered. And developers don't want to spend a lot of time learning. They'd rather be developing and learning. So having a low learning curve is a pretty uh, big factor when you want to consider a framework. Another thing to consider is the hosting requirements. Uh, most, most frameworks will work on standard hosting, but you do have to make sure for those exceptions that your framework is compatible with your host which also leads into the ease of installation. Uh, like I said before, <coughs> developers want to spend time developing, not installing. So uh, having an uh, easy installation might be a big factor to consider. Other than that, there's a lot of things to consider, like community size, <coughs> architecture pattern, whether it's MVC or something else. Uh, you can also consider the license, libraries, or even uh, what security features a uh, framework has. So based on those things, we chose Code and I for these reasons. Uh, it has a great documentation website. If you're ever faced with a problem, you can go there and you can find so much out, out so much about it. Um, it also has a, a great MVC structure, which uh, what we were looking for, and also uh, has a lot of the libraries we need for our application. And on top of that, we all have experience with it. We've all worked with the previous projects, so it just seemed like the right fit for us. So for our security for this application, uh, part of my research was. Uh, learning about identity and access management. And uh, as the matter says in the, in the middle, uh, it's all about providing the right people with the right access at the right time. Um, and with this application, given that there'll be multiple roles um, with the user and admin, you'll have to have, you'll be, have to be able to, uh, within the application, make sure that security's there so a user can't be able to do what an admin should be able to do or a student should be able to do what an admin does. Um, also, the idea of self-service so if a user forgets his password he doesn't have to contact an administrator and ask for them to reset it that they can do it on their own 
um, will be another thing that will be added uh, into our application. Um, some things that we won't have is single sign-on, um, just because it would be uh, extremely hard to do um, with the, just because everyone has different operating systems and stuff like that. Um, as well as we'll also have um, with this, uh, make sure that the passwords are uh, strongly secured so um, it'll be a lot easier, or so it'll be uh, better for the security of the application. Um, and going on with that, uh, the reason security will be so big for this application is because um, since it is, we want it to be safe for the students, um, faculty, and staff to make sure that um, there is a safe environment, unlike Craigslist and stuff, when anyone can be on it. Um, given that uh, Mizzou kind of pre-screens people to make sure that everyone who comes in is, um, I guess, not dangerous um, or so, uh, that it'll be safer for them. For our project management, we decided to adopt an agile development uh, process, and specifically the Scrum development framework. Uh, we chose this because it'll be easy to manage our time over a period of uh, several iterations uh, while we're doing our development process. Our sprint length is going to be two weeks, and we're using this Mingle web application, uh, which I've uh, customized to use for our project for both Capstone 1 and Capstone 2 so far. Ideally, this is how a Scrum uh, flow would need to go. You have a product backlog, and uh, you move your uh, stories, or those, that's where you store your features, into the sprint backlog, which what, that's what you're going to work on for your sprint length. And uh, we had weekly meetings to discuss our progress, see how it was going. And at the end of each sprint, the, the goal is to have a, a product that is working or a finished paper uh, for Capstone 1, etc. This is a typical sprint planning board uh, where we have stories that are assigned to sprints, and uh, they initially end up start out in the backlog. And uh, we can drag them by priority is uh, we have high, low, uh, medium, and optional. And can you go to the next one? this is our sprint task board, and tasks are assigned to stories. And uh, we can assign uh, our, like each team member to a task to work on that. And in Capstone 2, we're going to actually be able to do paired programming and assign two uh, workers to that. Uh, Capstone 2, we're also going to add hours uh, so we can enter in how much time we spent on certain parts of the project, which we can use for reporting. And for progress and reporting, uh, for Capstone 1, we, uh, we would look at our task uh, based on each sprint and see how it was breaking down. And over here we have our chart that uh, it shows the, uh, our tasks that we need to complete uh, based on priority. Uh, in Capstone 2, we're also going to add bug management uh, so we can report any bugs that we find in our code or while uh, working with the application. And those can be assigned to uh, certain tasks. And uh, next one. This is a story card in our Mingle application. It has related tasks under there, and uh, so you can easily see where the, what what we need to do. And it has related bugs uh, going to which task too as well. And this is a task card, and also links to the bugs associated with that task. So this is just a brief kind of overview of our resource needs. The top is kind of um, just what it would be if this was an actual software development project in a real software engineering company. Um, and then the down below is our real cost. So uh, we found a uh, domain name for $10, so about 83 cents a month, and a uh, server for about $12, so a dollar a month. Uh, so with our testing strategy, uh, what we plan to do is test in development. Um, and with that, we plan to use PHP unit for our unit testing and Jasmine for our JavaScript and jQuery testing. We're also going to use test plans to manually test uh, our website for responsive design, make sure it's all, uh, achieving all of our functional requirements. And for required in independent learning, we're going to have to take a look at how to do test-driven development because I don't think any of us have done that before. Uh, that's what we got.